Good morning, sisters. Good morning. And the brothers are also sons. <laughs> Welcome, brothers. Uh, today is a special day for women, as you can see. Um, we are dealing with Adventists saying no to violence. But probably we can uh, reserve ourselves for this afternoon on a, a little more on that topic. Uh, for this morning, I want to congratulate all our dear sisters for being who you are. God bless you. Now, by the way, of you sisters who are here, let me see how many of you are here. Sisters, ladies, girls, okay? How many of you, how many of you chose to be a woman? Hello? None of you. All right. Let's get to the Bible a little while. Uh, in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, reading verse 30, here is what the Bible says. Proverbs 31, verse 30 says, I am using the New King James Version. You can follow in your various versions. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Amen? Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman... But a woman who fears the Lord <coughs> shall be praised. Now, these words are written by Solomon. Solomon is the king of Israel. And the Bible <coughs> paints him or says he is a wisest king that ever lived in his time. Now when you go through the scriptures, the scriptures will also show us the wisdom of Solomon. In other words, this man Solomon stands out as a man who was very rounded. He was not type, a type of a profession whose understanding of things were narrowed down to his profession. But rather, the man understood nearly every aspect of life. You go to science, you go to any other field in, in, in that existed at that time, or probably this time, Solomon understood it. Now, when he is writing about a vicious woman, in Proverbs 31, he outlines what type of a woman a vicious woman is. And then he concludes, he climaxes with a statement that stands out even now and will forever be. He says charm is deceitful. Now, it is very important. What did I say? Very important. For a woman to look at her best. I thought the ladies would say amen. Come on now, don't be silent. 
Okay, it's very important for a woman to look at her, her best. And um, I always tell my wife, when, by the way, she was sending greetings. I spoke to her this morning that I'm going to Central Church and I'm going to speak to the women in Central Church. Now, I'll be speaking to women. Now, are there men here? So if I'm speaking to women, remember the word, women ends with men. Are we together? Yeah, so when I'm speaking to women, I'm speaking to we men. Are we together? So she passes her greetings. Yeah, so I always say, whenever we are leaving home, except for probably for the field or for the farm, she should be coming from her room, from her dressing mirror, maybe 15 minutes before 8. And probably you have to travel about 50 kilometers away. How are you going to get there? So what I'm trying to say is this. Charm is deceitful. Now, apparently, in life, for some reason, many of our mothers, many of our sisters, major in minors. Their priorities somehow have been misplaced. By the way, I have entitled the topic goodness and beauty goodness and beauty so their priorities are somehow misplaced the things that seem not to matter at all that's where they spend their time and so the wise man is saying this morning or this afternoon charm is deceitful in other words a woman when she comes of, out of her home, she must be charming. She must look at her best. She must be attractive, presentable. Look at your best. But even when you look at your best, remember, charm is deceitful. Beauty, the Bible says, passes away and that is a reality a reality to all both men and women I remember some 33 years ago when maybe 35 years ago when I met this little girl uh, when I met her she, she was in a group of other young girls. They came to our church. And they were standing here, they were singing. And I was a single pastor. And I was looking at them as they were singing. And my eyes caught her attention. And my desire went out for her. She looked so beautiful. And she is still beautiful. But you know what has happened? When I look and, I mean, when I take back my eyes and my mind on that particular day, the way she looked and the way she looks now, it's far different far different but the fact is the more we get to live together the more she wins my heart um, the fact is her daughter our daughter looks more beautiful than her not because my wife has lost her beauty, but because age 
is catching up and slowly the fish is turning slowly, slowly but sure, <laughs> getting wearing or maybe she's wearing out. I don't know whether that's, that's a good word. She's, 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 slowing, she's slowing down. Maybe that's the best way. She's slowing down. As age catches up in a life of a man or a woman, that beauty, that handsomeness begins to slowly go away. You begin to say, oh, this woman lived to be, used to be herself. She really used to be herself, but not anymore. Why? Because that strength, that smoothness, that used to exist in those days has slowly disappeared. And that's what exactly the Bible is talking about, saying, look, the attractiveness that you enjoy is deceitful because you may not as be as attractive as you are supposed to be. You may walk out of your house majestically because you have spent time on your dressing mirror and you have done your best so that when you come out, when people look at you, they say, yes, there's a human being here. And as they say there's a human being there, then God looks. He says, what is going on with my daughter? Hello? In other words, do not spend time in as much as it is necessary on things that do not matter in the eyes of God. And so, the Bible says, charm is deceitful, beauty is passing. These two are necessary in one's life. You need them. You have to have them. You have to do something about them. But nevertheless, but, the Bible says, a woman who fears the Lord, a woman who spends time in working out her relationship with God. A woman who spends sleepless nights trying to think of how best she can please her God is a woman that is worthy of praise. I want to, you, my dear sisters, to just pause a little moment and begin to think of yourself. How much time do you spend in trying to make yourself look yourself, look at your best? And how much time do you spend in trying to develop your relationship with God? In today's world, we seem to have a big challenge in the church because most of our women do spend time, hours and hours, trying to make, to improve their deportment, to improve their outward appearance at the expense of their relationship with God. And so this morning, allow me to spend a few minutes to try to help ourselves as to how best we can develop our relationship with God as women, 
and brothers in the church. The Bible says, but a woman who fears the Lord. When you have spent your time in charming, trying to look attractive, trying to look appealing, so that when you walk in the streets of Nairobi, and men look at you, or your fellow sisters look at you, they say, yes, she is herself. She is attractive, she is beautiful. The Bible says, but. But a woman who fears the Lord. But the question that should come quickly is, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Now, when you read the Bible through, from Genesis up to Revelation, there are many portions of Scripture that will come to help us understand the fear of the Lord. First of all, let me get with you to the book of to the same book, chapter one, verse seven. Quickly get there, and here the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Right there, the Bible begins to tell you what it means to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you despise, when you do not spend time with the word of God, when you have no time with God, in his word, then you are not praising the Lord. You are not worthy of praise. A woman who is worthy of praise will spend time with the word of God. Because the word of God does something in one's life. The word of God recreates. It is the word of God that, are, that would attract you to true beautiness. It is the word of God that will help you become a real woman. A woman who when he, she stands up, people begin to say, yeah, this is a woman. You know, there are women in this world who have no character. Right? Right? They are sisters who have no character. And so when God, God is speaking to us, when he is saying charm is deceitful, beauty is passing, he is actually saying, I want you to understand my daughters. What matters in life is your relationship with God. And that relationship does not come anyhow. That relationship comes as a result of you spending time with the word of God. When you have women, or probably when you have a woman in your home who have nothing to do with God, Probably, if you think you are married, then you better ask Ahab. Ahab will tell you what it means to have a woman who doesn't believe and fear God. King Ahab, among the kings that we read in the Bible, probably was one king who was married to the most beautiful woman in the world or who ever lived. Her name was Jezebel. 
Jezebel was very attractive. In the language of the young people today, she was very appealing. When you look at her, she is shining. When she sits among women, among men, women, she stands out. Her beauty was just something to admire. But you know what? The Bible says this woman did not fear God. This woman was so powerful that King Ahab had no say in his kingdom. What she said was final. And because of her wickedness, she was able to influence her husband to lead the entire nation into the worship of a false god, Baal. Because of the works and the influence of this woman, the entire nation worshipped a false god. And by worshipping a false god, that made the god of Israel anoint. And we, he withheld the reins for three and a half years. And when God holds the reins for three and a half years, that's when they realized and discovered who the true God is. But even after discovering who the true God is, this woman still continues to influence her husband to work against the servant of God, Elijah. And when she works against Elijah, Elijah run, runs away, and when he runs away, and one day, Naboth could not sleep. Sleep just that couldn't come because he had discovered that one of the gentlemen, one of the men around had a wonderful vineyard. And he envied that vineyard. He called this gentleman and said, sit here, tell me, are you the owner of this vineyard? And the gentleman says, yes. He says, please, I'll give you a better one. I'll give you a better one. Leave this one for me. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense, does it? If the vineyard you want to give me is better than the one I have, better have that, that better one, isn't it? But Naboth says, no, I cannot allow you to do that. This is my inheritance from my, from, from my forefathers. So I cannot let it go. So I have went to bed with a sick mind. And when he gets there, he can't sleep. And the woman comes and says, ah, sweetheart, what is going on? What is happening? He says, I want that, I want that garden there. But I can't have it. The guy is saying, I can't have it. He's not ready to give it to me. And the woman says, ah, is that a problem to you? Leave it to me. Leave it to me. And you know what? The following day, Naboth was not there. Because Jezebel had worked it out. Now, the point I'm trying to make is, when a woman is attractive, when a woman looks so beautiful, she cares for herself, she, she, she spends time to take care of herself and forgets her spirituality. Then there's disaster in the home, isn't it? So the fear of the Lord demands that a woman must spend time in, with the word of God. Start the word of God. Read it every day. And then you begin to grow spiritually. When women have no time with the word of God. They have no boundaries. 
they have no boundaries. But in today's world, when we are living in the very last times of this earth's history, there is a need for those of us Hello? For those of us who have declared ourselves as men and women who have chosen Jesus to be our, our personal savior. Those of us who have identified ourselves with the God of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. There is need for us to stand out there is need for us to demonstrate to the world that we belong to a God of peace, a God of love, a God who fear, who cares, who cares for humankind, a God who knows no man, a God who calls Father. Son, 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 grandson, son. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm trying to say. In the presence of God, we are all sons and daughters of God. Apparently, God has no grandchildren. All of us are his children. All of us are daughters. The mother is a daughter. The daughter is a daughter. The granddaughter is a daughter. All are daughters. And that's the God that we worship. And so those of us that have chosen, my dear sisters, those of us have, that have chosen to be members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you dare, you dare, Dare to be a child of God. Resolve that you will spend time with the word of God. Resolve that God is going to be number one in your life and that is the one you are going to reverence. When you come to church, as a daughter of God, you walk in in those doors. You must walk in with one purpose. I have come in this building for nothing but to worship God. Worship him. Give him glory. After you have worshipped him, stand quietly and go home. And enjoy the blessings that God has given you. Never you give yourself a time to think of what my sister is thinking about, what my sister is talking about. Your responsibility, your duty is to give glory to God. You have come in the presence of God, worship Him, give Him glory. After giving him glory, walk out and go home. Enjoy the blessings that God has given you. But you know, we have a serious problem as women. And worse still, our brothers. Many of us do not seem to understand what the Bible says. When God is sitting down to create, what did I say? When God is sitting down to create, he does not say, let there be. Does he? He says, let us. 
Are we together, brothers and sisters? When God decides to create man, he says, let us make man in our image. And God stoops down. He molds something that looks like him. Now look at your neighbor. That one seated next to you. Look at her. Look at him. How do they look like? That one seated next to you. That one seated next to you is God's image. You didn't hear, did you? That one seated next to you is who? God's image. Now the challenge that we have is that we men, not women, but we men, think that we are the image of God. And that our women are our flesh. Hello? Now that's a serious problem. We think women that these women, when we look at them, we think these are our flesh. They are not the image of God. But that's a mistake. In as much as they are our flesh, my Bible tells me when God is creating a woman, he causes a deep sleep into a man. And then what does he do? He takes out a rib. And out of that rib, what does, God, what does God do? He creates a woman in the image of God, in the likeness of God. So in as much as women are our flesh, but they are equally the image of God. And so because a woman is the image of God, you and I, women and men, are both God's image created after his likeness. But the question is, what we often forget, I think is in Isaiah. Quickly get to Isaiah 43. And I'm going to read verse 7. Here the Bible reads, Everyone who is called by my name. Hello? The church is listening. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. I have formed him, yes. I have made him. Now, that is a very, very, very pregnant chapter of a verse. That statement is deep and very powerful. The point that comes out is that you and I were created for the glory of God. When I read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I do not find anywhere in the Bible that gives me a reason why man and woman were created by God other than this one. I hope somebody is listening. There is no other reason why you are existing apart from this one. And the reason that is giving, given here as the reason of our existence is that you and I, wherever you are, whatever you do, must give glory to God. God created us so that we can give glory to him, not glory to ourselves. Glory must, be, must go to God in everything that we do or say. Now, here is what I'm trying to say. I know in this church, pastor, we have professionals. Yeah, we 
have professionals, we have business people, different kinds of people here. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why are you what you are professionally? Why are you an accountant? Why are you a lawyer? Why are you a teacher? Why are you a doctor or a nurse? Why are you, why, why are you what you are? One time, I took time to think of this life. Hello? I sat down, I said, what is it that is involved in this life? Somebody listening out there? And I analyzed. I went through whatever is called life, whatever is involved in this life. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that? After the analysis, after the thinking, thinking deep, deeply, thinking deeply, I discovered that this life is about one thing. And you know what that thing is? Is eating. True or false? Before you came here, you had breakfast, isn't it? Hello? Before you came here, you had breakfast, isn't it? After taking your breakfast, what did you think of? Lunch. After taking your lunch, what would you, would you think of? After taking your supper, what would you think of? You wake up in the morning, you get in your dressing room, you dress up, you get into your car, you drive to your office, and you get into your office. I am the manager, or I am the director. Why are you a manager and a director? Come and talk to me. Talk to me. Why are you a director or a manager? Hello? Hello? Early in the morning, you get into your car. You call your children. Get in, get in. I take you to school. You take them to school. You dump them in the school. They are studying. So that they can be what? Managers, accountants, doctors, so that. <laughs> Come on, talk to me now. This life, no matter who you are or what position you hold in life, is all about eating. But the question is. Did God create us to eat? The Bible says God created us so, so that we may give glory to who? To him. And so in his infinite love and wisdom, God decided. You didn't hear. Did you hear? God decided. That when you become a human being, you should become what you are today. And when you become what you are today, so that what you are today will give you something to eat. So that when you have eaten, you have strength to go and give glory to God. But unfortunately, we are not using our positions to give glory to God. We are using our positions to glorify ourselves, to bring glory and honor to ourselves. That is not the plan of God. God desires that when you are a director, when you are a manager, you should use your managerial position to give glory to God. The 
that beauty that God has given you, use it to give glory to God. That attractiveness, you must use it to give glory to God. Whatever you have, whatever that God has blessed you with, use it to give glory to God. The moment the glory goes to yourself, then you are misdirected. You know, sometimes I try to spend time to think as to why I am alive. I don't know whether you think about that. Come on now, talk to me. Why am I alive? Only one reason. That I may be a blessing to somebody. When you were leaving your home, when you woke up, my sisters, come on now. When you woke up in the morning, you were making a decision to, to dress up, isn't it? When you chose to put up to put on that dress, what was in your mind? Come on now, talk to me. What was in your mind, my sisters? When you were putting on that dress, what was in your mind? I want to put it on so that when I get to church, when they look at me, they will say, yes, she is here. Was that what was in your mind? Sometimes us men don't really matter very much, but of course even us, there are times when we say, ah, where am I going today? I'm going to Nairobi Central. Which suit will suit Nairobi Central? <laughs> Pastor Lemos. <laughs> Which suit will suit the night of the center? But does God care about that? The point I'm putting across this morning is that you and I are here so that we may be a blessing to others. In blessing others, we may give glory to who? The question is, what you do, where you are, does it give glory to God? Each morning you wake up, my dear sisters, each morning you wake up, kneel down and pray to God and ask him, God, help me to be a blessing to someone today. God cannot make a mistake of allowing you to be a member of this church for allowing you to be a resident in Nairobi just to mess up. No, God cannot make that mistake. Now, let me ask you a question. Please, I... I, 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 I want to be as, as free as I can be. Are, are we together? I want to ask you a question. Um, can I use you, my elder? Please come. I hope this is working. Okay, um, my elder, also. what are you in society? So, sorry for that. Please, bear with me. By profession, I'm a quantity surveyor. A, a what? A quanti Qu quanti quantity surveyor. Quantity surveyor, yes. Okay, quantity surveyor. Yes. Okay. Um, so, your offices are in Nairobi? Yes. Why in Nairobi? 
because that is where the services we offer are required by many in consultancy. If you went to Eldred, you can't find you know, that, 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 that job cannot. <laughs> uh, I it can. Is it, is, it is there. It can be done there. It can be done there. In Mombasa. And, in Mombasa. But again, I do not need to be in Mombasa uh -huh. to do it there. I can still serve Mombasa from here. Okay. Yes. But you can still serve Nairobi from Mombasa. From Mombasa, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Are you following what I'm trying to say? The job you are doing, you don't necessarily need to be in Nairobi. You can be anywhere else. But the question is, is Nairobi the best place of all the places in the world? So, uh, sorry, I am supposed to be preaching, but uh, I have become Get gotten into something else, but allow me to do that. Is Nairobi the best place in the world? Or maybe is Nairobi the best place in, in Kenya? I want to believe there are best places which are better than Nairobi, isn't it? But somehow we find ourselves in Nairobi, isn't it? There are situations, there are times when you try to be in the Eldred, you are not comfortable. Things don't seem, don't, don't, don't seem to be to be getting to be getting well. You know, they don't seem to to appeal. You go to Mombasa, things are, you go to Nakuru, things are not working on. But somehow, when you come to Nairobi, you seem to be you seem to settle, and it's like a burden has come out, isn't it? Uh, uh, probably is 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 Nairobi Central the only church Seventh Day Adventist church in Nairobi? There are many others, isn't it? But when you go to those churches, somehow you don't feel comfortable. But when you come to Nairobi Central, uh, you, you are at home. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why is it like that? God has designed it that way. God knows very well where you and I can be a blessing. When God brings you into Nairobi, he gives you an office in Nairobi, he gives you a position in Nairobi, it is because God knows when you are what you are in Nairobi, you can better be a blessing to someone. Today the world is in chaos. There is no peace in the world. And yet God has designed, God has chosen you, the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to be promoters of peace. Hello? Come on, talk to me. Please don't get disturbed. Don't think of what is behind us. Uh -uh. I am talking about women and what? The Adventist church saying no to what? To violence. I'm not talking of the issues that are in this church. No, forget about that. I'm not here for that. Those are for him. <laughs> okay. So the point I'm making is, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you need to know, to re no, you let it ring in your mind. I am here as an ambassador of God. I am chosen by Jesus so that wherever I aim, I may be a blessing to somebody. We have men and women who are being abused out there. Abuse of all sorts, of all kinds. They are shedding tears day in, day out. They are longing and looking for somebody to come and give them comfort. And somehow God strategically has put us as a church in this city so that we may be a blessing to the men and women, the millions of this country.
But the question is, are you a blessing? When you are driving in the streets of Nairobi, when you are walking in the streets of Nairobi, what do you see? When you are walking in the streets of Nairobi, when you are driving in the streets of Nairobi, what do you hear? Everywhere you look, where everywhere you go, there is a cry of help. Somebody somewhere, somehow, is crying for help. They need your attention. They need our attention. But what have we done as a church? What have we done as member, individual members of this church? Do we respond to the social needs of our people out there? When Jesus came to this world, the Bible says, or Ellen G. White says, he mingled with the people as one who desired their good. He met their needs and then bade them do what? Follow me. We, brothers and sisters, are agents of righteousness. Chosen by God. That through us, many men and women, the boys and girls in the streets of Nairobi, may receive our help. Through us, they may get to know who Jesus is. Through us, they may find salvation in Jesus Christ. The question is, what are we doing about it? You know, fearing God, fearing God does not necessarily mean you walking into this church building. Sit there, sing songs of praise, read the Bible. No, it is much more We need men and women, boys and girls in this church who will have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. It is not enough to sit in that pew and sing praises to God and walk down back to your home empty without Jesus in your heart. There is need for you to sit at the feet of Jesus and ask yourself, Jesus, are you in my heart? Who is it that is reigning in your life? Who is it that is commanding your life day in and day out? Who is it that is directing your life? Brothers and sisters, in case you have forgotten, Jesus is coming again. And his coming is sooner than you and I expect. There is need for you, my sisters my brothers, to take time to prepare yourself for the second coming of Jesus. And how can we prepare the second coming of Jesus? By opening our hearts and allowing Jesus to reign in our lives. Give him an opportunity to be the leader and the guide of your life. So that wherever you go, your life is under the command and the direction of King Emmanuel. Let Jesus walk with you. Let Jesus 
live in you. Let Jesus be your guide. Do not allow your priorities to be misplaced. Take time to consider those things that matter most in this life. And there's nothing more important in this life than creating a space in your heart for Jesus Christ. He is the Lord and the Savior of our lives. If ever there was a time that we needed Jesus, now we need him than ever before. Because when we are sleeping, the devil is not sleeping. When you go to bed, he looks at you and he says, tomorrow morning, when he wakes up, when she wakes up, where are we taking him? And he makes sure you go through that path that he knows when you will have done his will, your relationship with Jesus Christ will be jeopardized. And that's why there is need for you and I to spend our time with the Lord Jesus Christ in his word and in prayer. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is a passing. But a woman who fears God shall be praised. Fight for the goodness of God. Forget about the beauty while it as beauty while it's beauty is as important as uh, is necessary in your life forget about it focus your attention on your relationship with Jesus Christ it all begins from our women when you women have a concrete relationship with Jesus Christ it becomes easy for me as a husband very easy I can confess do you want me to confess this, this afternoon before I sit down I can confess pastor in my home in my home my wife is more spiritual than I but you know what I am a president of a conference. I am a president of the conference. And as a president of the conference, I am supposed to be the spiritual leader of the what? Of the conference, isn't it? But you know what? My wife is more spiritual than I. I can confess, but don't tell her. <laughs> She's more spiritual than I. And because my wife is so spiritual, I find my strength to lead the, conf the conference. She's my pillar. I know even now when I'm speaking to you, she's praying for me. No question about it. When you women become spiritual women in the church. Sorry for this. I apologize before I say it. There will be peace in the church. You ladies, you have a way that you are able to drive a man to do the right thing that a fellow man may not know. And that's why you should not question the wisdom of God. 
When God at first created, he created Adam, isn't it? And then God says, it is not good. Hello? It is not good for a man to be what? Alone. Let's give him a what? A help meet. Somebody who is going to help him. And so when a church is full of men without women, that church, that church will have challenges. So, my dear ladies, I appeal to you. Spend time with God. Be a little more spiritual than your men. And then God will use you to bring peace wherever you are, whatever you do. God bless us. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Does Christ reign in you? Does Christ reign in me? Do we spend life with Jesus? That is the bottom line. Thank you, pastor. How many have been blessed by the pastor's preaching? Can I see by pastor, we are blessed. We now come to the end of the session and uh, we are going to have a closing song, 569, our chorister. Let's
that broke its spirit, set me by thy grace, set your Savior in my humble cry. Father, dear Lord, thank for the opportunity that you have given us to hear your voice through your main servant. Now, as we conclude this divine service, be with us, bless each of us. May your face be upon us and keep us, give us peace. Be with this church. Bring unity among all the members and forgive us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.